In Elden Ring, Dexterity is known as Sing 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 And yeah, Dexterity is cool, but it'd be even cooler if you could pull a gun out. Calm down. Anyway, in this video I'll be taking 5 major areas of Elden Ring and finding the most powerful Dexterity weapons in each area. For an example, say I slurped all the OP juice out of Limgrave. I got the most powerful weapons and armors, but now what? Now I get to kill the main boss of that area and move on to the next one. It's basically a showcase of the most powerful weapons and armors in each area. Now for some rules, and there's only two. All weapons I use must have dexterity as its highest required stat. And for number two, to move on to another area, I have to kill the area's main boss and try to become as OP as possible. Choosing my character, I was going to go with the one with the highest dexterity stat, which is the warrior, but I ended up choosing the samurai because of the insane, great, amazing weapon, the uchigatana it starts with. And for my keepsake, I just found a magical stick on the ground. Then I got murdered by this giant crab and loaded into an Irish spring ad. After that, I got my horse and found a graveyard. At the end, I found another Uchigatana, so now I'm dual wielding, I guess. Now, I wanted some cooler and stronger weapons, so I went to the Dragon Burnt Ruins and opened a chest below to find the Twin Blade. To get some upgrade materials, I had this giant kill this cool statue, and they just kind of popped out. Then, further into Weeping Peninsula, I beat this Erd Tree Avatar, but this isn't the reason I came to this tree. Around these tiny Erd Trees, you can find these mini tree people. They sometimes drop their spears, and that's what I was looking for. A lot of us are full of shit! After that, I went around to collect a couple talismans, such as the Axe Talisman and the Green Turtle Talisman. I'm not sure if I'd use the Axe Talisman, but the Green Turtle Talisman is good all around, so I equipped it immediately. Next, I made my way down to Castle Morn, home to the greatest sniper of all time. Target neutralized. The only reason I came here is for the Twin Blade Talisman. This increases the last hit in an attack chain by 45%, and I have a Twin Blade, so that definitely means it's going to be good. What I didn't expect from Castle Morn is the Whip, and I tried it out, and uh, it sucks. I didn't need to kill Dr. Eggman at the end of Castle Morn, but it's free runes, so I did it anyway. Before challenging Margit, I got the full Tree Guardian set. Not only does it look fire as hell, but it's better than my Samurai stuff. For this fight, I was going to use the Bleed on the Bloody Slash Ash of War found in Fort Height. Also in Fort Height, I found cookbook number 6, which can be used to make blood grease. I also upgraded both my Ushi Katanas to plus 3 and put the Bloody Slash Ash of War on one of them for the passive bleed effect, and used blood grease on the other one. And Margit died quick. We could have filled pools with his blood, but it doesn't really matter because this is just a practice boss. Godric is the main enemy. With Stormvale unlocked, I had a couple new weapons I had access to. First were the Hook Claws and the Misericord. I also picked up the Stormcaller Ash of War for something I was going to try later. But there's a weapon I'm missing, a weapon that would take 25 times as long to get, but you know what they say, time is power. By farming this one skeleton at the Church of Pilgrimage, you can find the Bandit's Curved Sword. And through slow-mo innovative technology, you can see the swords hit four times before jumping and touching the ground again. Throw some bleed in that equation, and you got a powerhouse combo. Back atop this tower in Stormvale, I murdered a generation of our feathered friends and picked up the Claw Talisman. I knew it increased jump attack damage, but I didn't know if it helped with fall damage or not. I also upgraded both of the Bandit Curved Swords to plus five. Yeah, Godric down, only a minute and ten. For his death, we get his great rune and an easy 20k because his weapons, I think, are for strength. In this stage, we used a lot of weapons, curved and straight, but for my main weapons, I used two banded curved swords because they're blood boilers. They just spew blood everywhere they go. For my side weapons, I used the twin blade and dual uchigatanas. I could have two twin blades if I could duct tape the two uchigatanas together, but it's fine, it's fine. For my armor and talismans, I used the full tree guardian set, the claw talisman, and the green dog talisman. Wearing this armor, I kind of feel like an herbal nature witch, or maybe if Radagast had a personal hitman he could order out on somebody. 
Now that Godric is dead, we have access to the next area, the entirety of Shrek's Swamp. But what I did next was right next to me. I farmed all these skeletons for the chance at the Grave Scythe. After 30 minutes, I got it and my heart sank to hell. I thought this was a dex weapon. It scales with 17 strength, are you kidding me? Thankfully, this isn't the only scythe in the game, because in the cliff bottom catacombs, I got lost for a while, but in the end, I found the scythe, which is kinda uncool compared to the other one. Then, I paired the Stormcaller Ash of War with it, so now I can identify as a tornado. I also got the Volcano Manor Invitation after talking to Prawn Man. To boost my tornado damage even further, I got the Wing Sword Insignia from one of those Melania Knights. I decided to try a thrusting sword since I haven't really experimented with them yet. This particular one, the Frozen Needle, has a good base damage and Dash of War that spits like an ice dart out that can inflict frost damage. Next, I completed a bit of Bloody Finger Hunter Euro's questline, and overall, 10 out of 10. Cool dude. After meeting with Yura, I headed up to the Frenzied Flame Village. There was a few things I had to do here, but the main thing was killing Fingerprint Vike. And I gotta say, this guy is harder than half the bosses in this game. I mean, he was the closest Tarnish to becoming Elden Lord, so I guess that makes sense. To beat him, I developed a strategy called Run Away and Come Back with a Sprinting L1. And it worked. I killed him and got his War Spear. Before upgrading it, I completed Vari's questline until it gives me the Pure Blood Knight's medal. And many of you know, that means Moog. Now, the question is, is Mogwin Palace really an area that falls under Lyernia? It can be accessed through a questline in Lyernia, but its main entrance is through the mountaintops, the giants, through this red portal thing. So I set up a poll, and you guys said 78% Consecrated Snowfield. No Moog for me. To upgrade Vike's War Spear, I got some runes by killing Loretta and random other bosses. I even challenged the Red Wolf of Radagon at the entrance of Rey Lucaria, and I won. Easily. With my new money, I picked up the Tree Spear from this carriage chest. I mainly got it because the Tree Spear and Vike Spear both scale with faith, and they're both great spears. It's also kinda cool that the Tree Spear symbolizes the Golden Order, and Vike Spear is kind of just evil. Unfortunately, we can't inflict madness on Ranala, but Ranala going insane would be a sight to see. For her second phase, I noticed the running L1 on the spears is absolutely devastating. I'm actually surprised she didn't turn into a Ranala flavored kebab. The only problem with her fight is her summons, so I use Vyke's Ash of War to create some distance or just kill them outright. At the very end of the fight, she spawned a damn dragon, but it was already over, she was one shot. From beating her, I got a ton of runes and a really good picture by the moon. In this stage, I use weapons from scythes to kebabs, but for my melee weapons, I use the tree spear and Vyke's war spear. And for my side weapons, I use not the grave scythe, but the normal, super uncool scythe, and sometimes I use the bandit curve swords. For my armor and talismans, I still use the full tree guardian set, the wing sword insignia, and the claw talisman. Now that Renal is dead, I can exploit and export all of the raw materials of Kaelid and its weapons into my inventory. This just means I have access to Kaelid, and my first thing was grabbing the cross Najita. Then, to get the runes to level it up, I killed Tweedledee and Tweedledum at Redmain Castle, and I added the Sword Dance Ash of War to make it even more powerful. Then, I found a nice homeless man on the side of the road. Do you want to buy some of the finest Jamaican weed? He sold me a great helm, so now I look like a knight. I wanted to complete Melania's Cousins, I think, questline, so I killed Commander O'Neill, got the needle, and returned it back to the man who actually bought the weed. And if you didn't notice, my armor went from this to this, but it came at a cost. Heavy load. No! Unfortunately, there's no gym in Elden Ring, so to burn calories, I started watching people jump off cliffs. The Great Jar's Arsenal is one of the best talismans in this game because it increases equip load by 20%. I am not fat anymore. I also got the Radagon Sword Seal, and I realized I didn't really need the Weapons Jar Talisman because the Radagon Sword Seal already brings me to medium load. To get a good talisman, I completed Millicent's questline until she stabs herself and gets healed by her needle. This gives me the Prosthesis Wearer Heirloom, which increases dexterity by 5. Now to hunt down another weapon. I had heard a bird, dark as night, with wings that shined in the moonlight. But you know what else I heard? Weak to holy damage. And weak to holy damage he was. I killed him and got one of his claws. Spoiler alert, it's not just a claw. It's the Death's Poker, which has the highest required stat of dexterity, even though it's one of the strongest magic weapons in this game. To upgrade this and to upgrade intelligence so I could use it, I killed the giant dragon in Kaelid and the Knight's Cavalry. 
With my new levels and magic bird claw, I challenged the Godskin Apostle below Radon's Great Rune Tower. And I told myself, I could beat this boss without using sleep pots. I told myself that for another two hours. These bosses are eating up my storage. The second I bring out a sleep pot, I got to experience the full power of the Death's Poker. In the back rooms behind the Godskin Apostles fight, you can find a chest containing the legendary item, the God Slayer's Greatsword. Now, the problem with the God Slayer's Greatsword is it scales with faith, and I already scaled through intelligence with the bird hook thing. Intelligence versus faith, light versus dark, blackberry versus orange one. In the end, I chose the Death's Poker because it has frost damage. Frost damage is just way too good. To be able to fight the boss of Kaelid, Radon, I had to do a bit of Rani and Selen's questline to make the stars, like, move so Radon could spawn. So yeah, for this boss, I'll show you exactly why I chose the Death's Poker. And then he goes up in the air. When he came back down, I had to let Alexander finish the fight. It was only right, and he did it. One punch is all it took, and we beat Radon. In this stage, I use weapons way more powerful compared to the last few stages. For my main weapon, I use the Death's Poker, and for my side weapon, I use the Cross Nagita. For my armor and talismans, I use the full Clean Rot Knight set for the aesthetic, the Radagon Sword Seal, and the Claw Talisman. I also wanted to mention I used the Magic Shrouding Crack tier to increase my magic damage on the Ash War of the Death's Poker. Now that I had conquered Limgrave, Liernia, and Kaelid, I could access the upper-ish part of the map, Volcano Manor, Althus Plateau, and Landell Royal Capital. First, I took this portal to go very, very north to the Windmill Village. This is where I found the Twin Knight Swords and, like, the Navy armor. And in the same village, I found Moldy Cheese Stick number two, and I killed him the same way as I killed the last one. He just loves to stand still and turn into a helicopter while I burn him in cold fire. Thankfully, he was carrying his dentistry equipment on hand because he dropped the Godskin Peeler. This weapon is a peeler. Now, I was going to pair this with the Twin Knight Swords, but wait, there's better Twin Blades in this game, so I went to this church and found Yura dead on the ground and picked up his Nagakiba. Nice katana, and I killed his wife and got her Twin Blade. Her Twin Blade is Eleonora's Twin Blade. It does some of the craziest bleed damage in this game and is definitely top 3 bleed weapons. I got Ritual Sword to increase their damage. And through slow-mo technology, again, we can see that the Twin Blades hit 4 times on the way down. I am going to be a blender. To scale into Eleanor's Pole Blade and Arcane, I killed the Mimic tier to get a Larval tier and the Silver tier mask which increases Arcane by 9. I also traveled west nearing Volcano Manor where I killed this giant crab and found the Scavenger's Curved Sword which I'll use later. A little bit higher on Volcano Manor, I fought the full grown Falling Star Beast and I got my ass kicked. I am not going back there. Instead, to reinforce my ego, I fought the Draconic Tree Sentinel, and I killed them. Bleed is that strong, and Eleanor's Pole Blade does so much poise damage. After Draconic Tree Sentinel, I ran straight to Godfrey. I used the Nagakiba because it's consistent, and the other Twin Blades kind of focus on bleed, and a ghost can't bleed. I'm also just really good at this fight. This fight is timed and flowed, and everything feels so calculated. Godfrey is just an NPC. Upon his defeat, I get another talisman slot and enough runes to fill up a pool and still have enough to fill up a hot tub. Now, it was time to improve my bleed build. I got three things, three huge factors that increased my damage by almost double. First was the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, and if you know how to get there, you know that it took me almost an hour to get to, and I also had to kill some guy named Edgar. My next item is actually in Limgrave, and I could have got it the whole time, except I forgot. I'm sorry. It's the Golden Vow Ash of War, and it obviously doesn't scale with faith because it's an Ash of War, and I could put it on any dexterity-based weapon. 
And the third thing is the thorny crack tier, and I didn't really get a number on how good it is, but I saw other people using it, so it kind of has to be good. But would I really go for a full bleed setup? Would I switch to the dark side this early? No, there's something I'm missing. In the middle of the capital, if you climb this metal rod, at the top you can find the Bolt of Grand Sax, a lightning weapon that requires 40 dexterity. And it does lightning damage, so I grabbed the lightning scorpion charm for more, bigger, better lightning. Uh, yeah, I think I might be the god of lightning now. Bleed finally met its match. For my main weapon, I used the Bolt of Grand Sax, and for my side weapons, I used the Eleanor's Pole Blade, the Nagakiba, and the Godskin Peeler. For my armor and talismans, I used the full skeleton set by killing Selvis' husband, the Radagon Sword Seal, Godfrey Icon, Ritual Sword, and Lightning Scorpion Charm. Now that I'd conquered the lower parts of the map, I could go and try and find Santa. And Latena backed me up by whispering in my ear that there's an old white guy in a castle nearby, so it's gotta be him. Wait, what? Santa and his elves are attacking me. No way, I'm gonna stick this lightning spear up his ass. Target secured. With my new medallion, I took the lift up, went through this weird dungeon, and made it out to the consecrated snowfield. But I'm not stopping here. I horsed all the way over to the town of Ordina, lit the four pillars, and took a portal to Mikola's Halig Tree. There were so many runes here. I was getting Newman's rune after Lord's rune after rune level 10, and every enemy drops at least a thousand. It is crazy. But it's not just runes, it's smithing stones too. I was getting the whole smithing stone family in my inventory. The first boss here is actually Loretta, part 2, and she didn't resist my lightning very well. One strategy that I used was when she summoned her magical swords, I would have enough time to get a full lightning spear off, and that did a ton of damage. In the end, she tried to hit me with her war sickle, but I didn't let that happen. 200,000 runes for that. No way. Now, I had entered the main part of Mikola's Halic Tree, and I have a few notes here. First of all, these guys are blind. Like, no wonder they can't find Mikola. Deeper into the Halig Tree, I fought this worm to progress Millicent's questline, and I died so many times. But that's when I discovered High Ground, and I won so easily, he just can't hit me up here. After the fight, two summon signs spawned in, one to help Millicent, and one to hurt Millicent, and I obviously chose to help her because she is a friend, and I had to kill her four sisters, I think? I don't really know who these people are, but we killed them, and I got the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. After that, I took a lift down, and oh shit. And I have never known defeat. Haha, <laughs> not until now. I am Melania. Blaze. Is that the maximum power we could get? I think it's time to switch. If you only knew the power of the dark side. That's it. Scavenger's curved sword in one hand, Bandit's curved sword in the other. It's time to test out our power. I've switched over and I think I love it. Now this has to work.
before acquiring Melania's katana, I went to show Fire Giant my new bleed weapons, and Alexander helped me. Bleed is literally this guy's kryptonite. His health just drains, and Alexander was there to deal the final blow. Now, I could finally enter Ohio, so I throw in my furry cosplay. The first challenge here is Godskin Duo, and since they're playing duos, I get to play duos as well, so I summon Bernal and we duo the duo. This fight actually wasn't that bad. Sometimes I did get taken to Pound Town by Fatty Balloon, and I think Bernal soloed Slim somehow. Most of the time, I was spamming the sing, sing, sing. move that does a ton of damage to take them out. Further into Faramazula, it was time. Ah, I see you finally made it here yourself. You are ready then, I take it. Then let us begin. I am the great Jar Warrior. I am Mist Alexander. Lend me strength, O oh warriors. Let us become one. It was a marvelous battle. I implore you. Take what I bequeath from inside me. <laughs> Killing Alexander in this game is an event never to be forgotten, and the talisman he gives is unrivaled in damage boosting. And for this boss, we're gonna need it. Out the gate, everything was looking good. I used the Bolt of Grand Sacks for the extra damage against dragons, and then he pulled out the nuclear bomb move. Oof, my game immediately crashed. So I had to fight this boss without recording, and on my fifth attempt, I got him. And what came with it? A giant enlarged spear. I wanted to test this out on Malaketh, but side note, does anyone have the problem where the Draconic Tree Sentinel chestplate just turns invisible and doesn't show up? Instead, I used the full Meatball set to turn into a 500 pound lightning boulder. The strategy for this meat build is to ram into your opponent until he dies or you die first. Who said dexterity can't look like strength? It may have been a damage powerhouse, but hitting Malekith in the first place was so difficult. In the end, he was at one sliver of health, and I was fat rolling to save my life. He did one double spinny attack, and I somehow dodged it and took the win with one final hit. In this stage, it seems like lightning weapons have dominated dexterity. For my main weapons, I used the Dragon King's Cragblade, the Bolt of Grand Sacks, and Melania's Sword. For my armor and talismans, I used the full Meatball set, the Godfrey Icon, the Lightning Scorpion Charm, the Ritual Sword, and Alexander's Talisman. We're in the endgame now. Next is Grandpa, and Melania's sword is the best weapon for this fight. It's almost like Waterfowl dodges his attacks on its own. Horaloo is a little bit tougher, but I just made an adjustment to start running around in circles mindlessly. I'm back, motherfucker! My strength befits a crown. For the final bosses, I used the Dragon King's Cragblade because of the insane damage, and I popped Radon's Great Rune for the increased FP and HP. To be honest, I still think strength is the pinnacle of all races, but dexterity is somewhere there too, and bleed is at the bottom. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video, so see ya.